Dennis Smith Jr. Highlight Dunk. All right, let's see what the hype's about. Oh! What's up, Mavs fans? It's DDP back again with another update for you. And today, I'm going to be talking about Dennis Smith Jr.'s ridiculous highlight reel summer he's put out thus far. Now, we just saw this dunk here. There was another dunk before that that I would show the highlight of, but I feel like that one was early enough in the offseason that it's kind of old news by now. And, I mean, frankly, to some of you, this one might be as well. But all the same, the main thing I want to talk about, the thing that I have been most curious about, is what he would do to improve his shooting because he was not an efficient scorer last year yes he can shoot threes but he just wasn't efficient at it and yes he has a 48 inch vertical which is insane in fact i've heard it's tied for the highest vertical in nba history which is crazy because even before the acl tear he only had like a 42 inch vertical only right but the dude has added six inches to his vertical post acl tear which is just absurd that said, I wanted to know more about how he would improve his shooting and his overall game, not just how high he could jump and if he can continue putting out highlight reel dunks for the next several years. So as you can imagine, I was ecstatic when I heard that he was working with Steph Curry's trainer. Because what does that mean? He's not just working on dunks this summer. He's also working on his all-around game. Now, I can already hear you saying... Well, that's cool, DDP, but can you tell us something a little more concrete, something a little more in-depth, maybe? Well, dear sweet viewer, yes, I can. Here are just three things Steph Curry's trainer had to say about Dennis Smith Jr. One, hyper-competitive. Two, all-star potential. Three, a, quote, unseeable ceiling. You know, for some guys, they'll say, the sky is the limit. And that's always been an obvious exaggeration, but man, it sounds like with Dennis Smith Jr., at least Steph Curry's trainer seems to think that might not be hyperbole. As my co-host for Mavs Fast Break, Inian Duca, said this past Sunday, if Dennis can add a mid-range floater to his game, something like a Tony Parker in his heyday, ooh, he will be next to unguardable. I, meanwhile, will point to his overall efficiency in his scoring, because his numbers while nice, were not achieved in the most efficient manner. Now, part of that will be improved just by it being his second year in the league. Things are going to be a little bit easier for him to process. The game will have slowed down. It's a level of competition he is now fully ready for. Whereas you could argue at times last year, while he was a human highlight reel, some of the moments just felt a little big for him. Another thing that'll help? Having a teammate like Luka Doncic for the next five to 10 years. Luka Doncic, as we've stated numerous times, is a guy that can play the one, the two, the three, or the four. He'll probably be a three by default, but he's a six foot nine, essentially point forward, with a real knack for playmaking. Now, Dennis Smith has been an on the ball guard his whole career up until this point, but you did see moments late last year where Rick Carlisle worked him off the ball. Whether that was in preparation for the hopeful pick of Luka Doncic, or if it was just something to try and make him a little bit more well rounded for other playmakers and guys that can create like J.J. Barea or now this year returning Devin Harris is another matter for debate. However, the benefit of having Luka Doncic and then the perennial lob threat that is DeAndre Jordan on the floor with Dennis Smith at all times will make him more dangerous because you're going to have the big man hesitant to leave DeAndre Jordan after he's thrown down a couple ridiculous alley-oops and as such that's going to make for a cleaner path to the rim for Dennis Smith Jr. One of the more negative stats for Dennis Smith Jr.'s rookie campaign was that he was the most blocked guard at the rim. Now this is in spite of him having again a 48 inch vertical and ability to jump out of the gym. So why would this be? Part of it could be from the times he couldn't dunk and had to try and rely on some kind of layup or reverse layup. The rest of it comes from the fact that the defense collapsed down on him because they didn't fear who he could kick the ball to or who he could throw a lob to. Now, yes, Dwight Powell had some nice ones, including the off the backboard alley-oop dunk from Dennis Smith last year, but it's not near the same threat you're going to see with DeAndre Jordan this season. 
So with improved floor spacing, it would have been better if they had kept Seth Curry. And DeAndre Jordan as a lob threat, it is a pretty safe bet that Dennis Smith Jr. will be significantly improved in year two. More help around him to help shoulder the load on a night-to-night -night basis and an improved overall game? That's the kind of development I'm excited to see. That's all my time for today, guys. Until next time, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Salute.